is revealed how her life was made pretty miserable by Nancy Pelosi in her early days in Congress. Uh, thanks to revelations uh, coming in, and you can see right here, Ryan Grimm's upcoming book, The Squad, AOC and the Hope of a Political Revolution. So he's got, he's dishing a little bit of what she had to say. And uh, here's a bit of it. We're gonna try not to swear because um, there were some swears in the original content. AOC had said, the amount of times she told me that's stupid, I have protest signs older than you in my basement, S. Like, yeah, but mine don't collect dust, which I think is a good response. And I like to imagine that she said that to Nancy Pelosi, but probably she just uh, texted it to uh, Ryan Grimm. Um, but yes, I imagine that having someone like Nancy Pelosi, who had been much more active in that regard decades earlier, saying, you know, you need to be quiet, you need to fall in line, you need to not be driving the conversation because I once did things, I can imagine that that would be pretty annoying too. Now, um, she also indicated to Ryan Grimm, AOC did, uh, that her life in Congress has been much better since Pelosi stepped down from being in charge of Cong uh, the House Democrats, saying, I thought things would get worse. I thought a lot of my misery was due to leadership more broadly having a thing against me, but my life is completely transformed, it's crazy. And it's that that made me realize it was kind of just Pelosi the whole time. Senior members talk to me, committee chairs are nice to me, people want to work together. I'm shocked. I couldn't even get floor time before. Uh, I don't know what Pelosi has to say about this. None of us do because uh, she's not responding to questions. But I want to remind everyone of another thing. This was not a behind the scenes thing that Nancy Pelosi said about AOC. She said it quite publicly in an interview saying uh, about her and other members of the squad. It'll be one of several or maybe many suggestions that we receive. The green dream or whatever they call it. Nobody knows what it is, but they're for it, right? Which is among the most condescending comments I think I've ever heard in politics. It's the green dream. We every we all knew what it was, what the plan was. It was not just a thing that randomly uh, Representative Omar and AOC talked about a bit and then said they're in favor of had a massive amount of support. It was a well detailed plan with a lot of different components. And for someone like Nancy Pelosi to just say the green dream or whatever, Jesus. Now that said, it got more specific, more personal about the squad in thoughts like this. When we won this election, it wasn't in districts like mine or Alexandria's. However, wonder, and she's a wonderful member of Congress. I think all of our colleagues will attest. But those are districts that are solidly democratic. This glass of water would win with a D next to its name <laughs> in those districts. And not to, not to diminish the, the uh, uh, exuberance and the personality and the rest of Alexandria and the other members. Now, I'm a liberal from San Francisco. I can compare my liberal credentials across the board. And I said to them, anything you're about, I got that sign in my basement 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Single payer, all of this. I got been there, done that, pushing a stroller many decades ago with all of that. So I share of those values. Yeah, she apparently really does like that anecdote and doesn't realize that I think it sends a very different message than she thinks that it does. Um, and also what she's dismissing there is that it doesn't matter the quality or ideology of the Democrats that we have. That's not what you should focus on. We should win races over Republicans, but whatever Democrat you have, you shouldn't be trying to get ones that are more representative of their actual district. And she goes on to say, uh, furthermore, that they have like four supporters. It's not a lot of people. There was a lot of comments there, Brett, but what do you make of what's been revealed? So uh, there's a comedian named Dion Cole, and he has a bit where he's, when he's, a, he's the comedian. And when he's in a room and someone else says something funny, he just doesn't know what to do. <laughs> he's like, I'm the comedian. So he, does, he doesn't even compute that someone else told a joke. That's Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi is the firebrand. Nancy Pelosi is the revolutionary in Nancy Pelosi's mind. So if anyone else comes forward and says, no, I'm going to do something revolutionary and very progressive and groundbreaking, it really, like, they're, it might it's it's less that it doesn't compute it probably pisses her off um and to to that point she already had dubbed the future of the democratic party the future of the democratic party for her was crowley and that's the person mm -hmm. that aoc beat to get that job which reinforces i mean of course Hakeem jeffries is going to be pretty jacked about this because he nicer because 
Crowley was in front of him in line. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, uh, I think that you're right. I think that there's a little bit of that. Um, like you would think, well, if you if you were if you're still that person that you were marching 25 years ago, then you should be super excited that there's other. That's not how anything actually. works, man. That's no, like, obvi- well, obviously yeah. it's not. I get that. Um, and and pointing out that you were in favor of it a really long time ago, and now you're not like you didn't accomplish it. Okay, that's complicated. You can say whether that's partially her responsibility or not, but that you're you're not pushing for it. Not certainly not in the same way right now. And so to denigrate. You know, those who are you care about the environment and that sort of thing, like, like it, it's not convincing to an 18 year old when you say back in the late 80s, I supported this thing that you do now, but now I'm attacking the people who are pushing for it. Like that does not make you look good. It doesn't make the Democrats look good. And I can understand why AOC might have been mad about that. Any other comments for moving? Uh, it's a, it, it's a both. It's a both. There's many fine people on both sides situation. Like politics is, and this is something people know, but it's sad when you realize you have to do it all the time. It takes incredible discipline to be a politician because like Pelosi resents AOC. AOC resents Pelosi. Mm -hmm. Like they resent each other and their generations feel the exact same. Like Nancy Pelosi's generation has the same feelings. I mean, like, don't call me someone in your way. I made your way so you could criticize me. And so, so you can then take the next step, but like you're taking the next step and you're like pushing me out of the way. Like that's how they feel. I, I'm not excusing it. I'm just explaining it. You always need to understand where the other person's yeah. coming from if you're going to engage in the discourse. I mean, I would assume, and I understand that you're talking about from their perspective, yeah. that uh, AOC and other members of the squad would have loved to have had Democratic leadership on their side for pushing for these issues. Yeah. I'm sure they would prefer that to having to protest outside of their doors, but but they're not on the side. Like They don't actually support it, maybe, maybe hypothetically, but they're not actually using their power in support of it. 